apparently, at one point, the description of this episode mistakenly called Pearl a he rather than a she. Obviously, I don't know if this is true since I never saw it for myself, so this will purely be a hypothetical sin. Oh, Lonely Blade, you so lonely. God, I hate that line. Titan Kenba! Okay, I can get the voice acting not quite matching up with the subtitles, but when Boomerang Blade in Japanese is literally just Boomerang Blade, why not just have that be the line? Also, Kaiten Kenba apparently translates to rotation right, which is not only a weird translation, but it's not even correct because the blades rotate to the left when Lonely Blade throws them. In order to give a proper demonstration, I'm going to need a sparring partner. Also, Garnet's middle finger isn't colored in in this shot. Luckily, I have the perfect candidate right here. If you already have the perfect candidate, then why did you even bring up that you needed a sparring partner? This entire battle is really cool, and the music is once again top-notch stuff. It really goes to show that Steven Universe can pull out all the stops with its fights when they happen. And this along with Ocean Gem really hooked me on the action side of Steven Universe when I first saw them. Bravo, Kruniverse. Defense rank S. Zero openings detected. Except for this point here where she whiffed a swing and left herself pretty open. Why didn't the Hollow Pearl go for that opening exactly? Why didn't we get to see how Pearl knocked the Hollow Pearl off balance? I guess the Kruniverse got lazy and decided not to animate that one. Then afterwards, the Hollow Pearl just gives up and doesn't even try to defend herself. Seriously, Pearl not only stared at it for a good few seconds, but gave a pretty clear tell for how she was going to attack. Perfect battle my ass. Garnet's shoulder pad isn't the right color in this shot. It's about waiting carefully for the perfect moment to cross. Who in their right mind would program a practice hollow pearl to have the capability to actually fucking stab you? For one thing, it's a hologram. Holograms aren't exactly known to be physical matter, so it had to be given that property via magic, I'd assume. But who would do that? Surely the approach of, oh, it hit me, I should be more careful with my next approach, would be enough? Not to mention, gems would likely be the ones practicing with these, so even if they were stabbed, it's not like the wound would be fatal to them, nor would it really teach them anything. Giving these things the ability to poof a gem just seems like it would waste everyone's time in the long run. And the more I think into this, the more I think the logistics of it were ignored in favor of, oh look, drama. That makes a good episode, right? Pearl drops her sword in this shot, but then in these two shots where the floor is shown, it's nowhere to be seen. Sometimes, if our bodies are badly damaged, we release our physical forms and retreat to our gems to regenerate. This is worded like a voluntary thing, which is not a good thing to insinuate. Because then I can ask a question like, if it's voluntary, why didn't Pearl explain what was going to happen before she poofed? Maybe it's a bit of a stretch, but I feel like these are the sorts of things you need to catch when you proofread something. How long will it take her to regenerate? You would think that after seeing Steven's mortified face, she would speed it along a little so she doesn't worry him. Gotta tell you though, love what you've done with the place. Do you wish to engage in combat? How the fuck is this thing still around? Do Garnet and Amethyst not know how to deactivate it? Or at the very least, how to beat its ass out of existence? And how is it able to exist without Pearl around anyway? The argument could be made that it's designed to be self-sufficient, and I do think it holds a little bit of weight, but considering that the wiki says that it can supposedly only be active for up to two weeks without Pearl, and because that just so happens to be how much time has passed, and because we have it really gotten any more info on the matter, I'm willing to bet that's just a number the Kruniverse pulled out of their ass so they could make this episode happen. So that argument doesn't hold much water. Here we have a mess. Animal, humanoid, miscellaneous. That could fall under animal. Also, holy shit, that's Guitaru Man. That's an awesome reference that I can guarantee you no one but me is going to get. And there goes Guitaru Man and his friends. Up, oh, never mind, they came back. There goes Garnet's shoulder pad again. How? Actually, how? In this shot, Hollow Pearl is standing like this, but in the next shot, her entire body is turned in the other direction. What do you think, Pearl? You'd think after the past two weeks of her gem not talking back to him, Steven would understand it's not gonna happen by now. The TV! Why must you destroy the things I love? 
Also, if you go frame by frame here, the TV actually starts sparking before the hollow pearl actually stabs it. I'm not the only one that thinks this looks weird, right? She only slashed one specific part of the mop, so why did it break into a ton of tiny pieces? Hollow Pearl's sword falls to the ground in this shot, but then in the next shot it disappears. Sometimes, you just have to accept things the way they are before you- Never mind, Pearl's back! Also, having Pearl cycle through all her older forms is a really nice touch. Why does this flower look like it's just drawn on the floor instead of being an actual tangible object? Steven, what happened to your room? So this whole house is Steven's room. Then why does Steven have a section of the house to himself that you also label as Steven's room? Ah, oh, fuck it. This whole thing's just confusing. Pearl's back! Pearl's back! Nah, I'd rather not listen to the most annoying sound in the world, but thanks for offering, Crewniverse. Wish to trust! Steven, cover that thing back up.